Thank you. Natural acid? Yeah, well that's great. <laughs> well, I'm on the wrong side of the camera then. I ought to be directing you into how to do this interview. That's always the way. Mumbo Jumbo Room. Ike's Mumbo Jumbo Room. <laughs> Chief Ike's Mambo Room. Introduce yourself. Hi. Absolutely. That's simple. Hi, I'm Natasha, and I'm at uh, Chief Ike's Mambo Room uh, this Wednesday night, as I am every Wednesday night. And um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the Rosebud Awards and uh, to uh, talk a little bit about the program which we presented uh, over in Anacostia this last November. And I. Uh, Welcome you to sit down and join me and uh, have a drink. <laughs> we'll talk. Yeah. Yeah. We had a grand idea. Um, a group of us got together under the uh, leadership guidance of Brian Tate, um, who most people know in this town if you're in the arts. Um, he brought a bunch of people together to try to think about some ideas of how to promote independent film and video in Washington area. And we knew that we have a lot of, um, we know that we have a lot of media people working in uh, D.C., people who own cameras, who know how to edit, who have probably even gone to film school. And um, we know that we turn out a lot of product in the area. So, but we wanted to do something about promoting the independent vision, the independent creative vision. We have a lot of documentaries, we have a lot of newsreel, a lot of news footage, a lot of um, um, international storytelling going on, but very little focus on our hometown, on this place as a place to nurture um, artists who want to tell stories about their town as they know it, or who just want to tell stories. So, this is a long answer to your question, but I had a good time doing it. I have a good time telling it. <laughs> oh, we wanted very much to. First of all, um, first of all, we knew we began hearing noise coming from uh, the Anacostia Museum, from uh, Eight Rock, and now there's another um, 27 and a half or some, some organization there. We knew that uh, the Anacostia area had been targeted by Mayor Kelly at the beginning of her administration as a possible enterprise zone uh, for the development of film and video industry there. There are a lot of warehouses, there's a lot of uh, space available. And then, of course, the uh, D.C. Commission on the Arts offers a special incentive grant award um, called the East of the River Arts Initiative, and we applied for that, and um, we got the grant, and we went into partnership, we got the grant in partnership with the American Theater Project, which is located in A-Rock, and we're very excited about having a chance to go down there, meet with folks, and uh, share some of what's going on on both sides of the river. <laughs> hey, Beth. Will, Will, come on, it's rosebud time. This is Will Cosby. Is there any way? Just a little, until it's, you know. This is Murr and this is Lynn. This is Will Cosby who works at Rowan House, who's a Rose Buddy. One of the early Rose Buddies. We're talking about how we got started. Thanks. Drink? Uh, I don't know what's going on yet. Now sit down. Sit down over there and let me finish oh. and then we'll deal with it. <laughs> All right, that's fine. How did you select videos that will be shown to the people that are in the house? Yeah, we got well. We got the grant into uh, together with. Um, I don't. I really didn't finish the story of the. Um, I didn't finish the story of how we actually decided to do Rosebud. So I can. I want to patch this in. I want to finish the story of how we uh, started Rosebud because I. I got diverted. I got off into this long thing. Um, 
So we kicked a number of ideas around, and uh, one of the ideas that surfaced was that um, very much like the Helen Hayes Awards had helped uh, promote uh, local theater in D.C., and very much like the whammies in music, what we needed was some sort of an event which would bring to the attention of the press and the wider public some of the very good works that are being presented, produced here. And uh, so we hit upon this idea of uh, doing a copycat, basically, award ceremony, except that we do not try to recognize the best. We do not try to recognize the works that are outstandingly created, masterfully produced, brilliantly shot. What we're looking for is to reward independent creative vision. We are looking for the eye of the artist behind the celluloid, behind the films, the videotape. And so we strive from among those works that are submitted to us to ask our judges, Rosebud doesn't judge the films, uh, to ask our judges to identify those works that, dem that are unusual, that are innovative, that are pushing the boundaries of film and video expression, um, and that represent independent creative vision. Um, and we early on started by having categories of different uh, types of film and video, uh, documentary, narrative, narrative short, animation, music video, and so forth. What we realized was that we had such an uneven uh, distribution of the kind of works we were looking for across all seven categories that after after two years, we experimented with the notion of simply combining everything together, film, video, long, short, documentary, narrative, and asking our judges to focus on which of those works demonstrates our goals in terms of seeking out the independent creative vision. So that's what we've done for the past two years and what we plan to do. It works. It works. We find that we've um, managed to do that well. Well, we work together with um, with the sponsoring organization whenever we take a showcase on the road. And uh, we talked early on after we got the grant with Ed Bishop. And in fact, in the Anacostia area, one of the themes that we're trying to continue is the theme of uh, wither black filmmaking, or African-American filmmaking, excuse me. Oh, God. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> we must be politically correct here. Yes, we must. <laughs> oh, it's important. I'm trying to be hip. I'm trying to be hip. <laughs> I can't. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's start with them. <clears throat> In collaboration and uh, with, after long discussions with Ed Bishop at the American Theatre Project, um, we independently determined what the, the nature of the program we would present and what we wanted to do was focus on vision and perception and talk about the difficulties of getting together the money, following through on the project, and, um, and delivering on a piece of work that maintains what your original vision was. So we called it Vision and Perception. We also uh, selected those works among our entries that were created by African American filmmakers um, from the tri-state area um, because we felt that this provides a logical role model for people. This is what, this follows up on a piece that we did the year earlier, uh, which was on uh, Gangsta Max Cinema, and the theme of that program, which was uh, hosted by Kay Shaw, um, was to look at the responsibilities of young African-American male filmmakers in terms of the themes and the vision that they chose to um, put up on the screen, and what that says about the power of filmmaking. Um, um, and the um, lack of opportunity, or perhaps what we really focused upon was the um, unused opportunity that the filmmaker has to truly make a vision of reality that they would like to see. This was our theme last year. So this year we wanted to focus on those artists who had succeeded in doing that, 
as evidenced by a selection of the films from our um, uh, showcase, and to bring in the filmmakers to talk with the audience about uh, how they were able to get their project together, get it off the ground, think about it, and how the finished product differed uh, or didn't from their original vision, and what their vision was, what the audience sees and what the audience's perception of the artist's vision is. So that was sort of part two of, a, of what we hope will be a continuing series in exploring the um, African-American filmmaking um, with respect to taking on certain responsibility. Um, I noticed that he had a lot of uh, most he had a lot of PR from a lot of different people doing film. Some were doing film about their race, some were doing film about another race. Right. Um, how have the minorities contributed to or been, you know, selecting their films or sending their films and gotten a lot of responses? Yeah, we're getting more and more. We're um, very eager to um, get more into the Howard and UDC filmmaking community. I think we are increasing in years. They have a very, I know these guys have talked to them and we've had some winners um, from that community. Um, what we're trying to do, they are students, usually they're on a busy schedule. It's difficult for them to participate in all of our events and have their piece available and so forth. Um, we, we make certain that our panel of judges uh, represents a um, picture, represents a snapshot, a reverse image, <laughs> uh, a mirror image of, of the multicultural diverse population of DC. And each year what we've now begun to do is to identify from among our nominees and winners those people who have not submitted again. Um, who uh, to be judges for the final year and then add to that certain people um, such as the people who are uh, editors of the Black Film Review and uh, a filmmaker with the uh, Asian American Arts Festival um, and Latino organizations as well. So we try to represent the diversity here and to bring those people in quite deliberately as an outreach effort um, as they represent their organizations and, and the talents of their um, various constituencies, if you will. <laughs> I honestly can't say. What the showcases that we have um, outside of our own venue at the Biograph and the American Film Institute, which are part of our festival, um, we have the Anacostia outreach and then we have just recently started a, um, a showcase sponsored by the Baltimore Film Forum. So we don't actually do many in-person um, exhibition uh, screenings. Um, my hope is that we we watch the numbers of entries, we count, we, <laughs> we're concerned about this because we're from, I'm from DC and I care a lot about this. Um, I am simply hopeful that what we will see as our influence is not necessarily the viewing audience, but the contributing audience. What I want to inspire in people is not another desire to come out and sit in front of a screen, but to go home, get together with a bunch of your friends, beg, borrow, steal, and <laughs> get that film out. If it's in you, if it's in you, you ought to do something about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, successful, I'm not sure. Successful in the sense that they're following their dream, absolutely. Um, a number of uh, the filmmakers have gone on. Now they've gone to New York. They've gone to uh, Hollywood, or at least they've gone to L.A. in hopes of working in Hollywood. Now, frankly, that's very much against what we're all about. 
about, which is about developing a nurturing environment so that artists can in fact remain here at home where we've got as much going on and as much opportunity for um, telling stories uh, in a proper environment um, as anybody. So. I'm not so much interested in following the careers of the people who have gone on to New York and Hollywood and made it. Good for them. I mean, that's part of our deal, too. But I'm much more interested in watching um, people develop the close camaraderie and, and, and link up with each other to work on the next film because they've met through Rosebud, um, helping them to get together with the post-production houses that can donate some time, um, developing and establishing other links and networks with them um, so that we can keep them honorably employed and creatively engaged. The first thing I uh, did in uh, film slash video was to attempt to produce a movie, which I still have hopes of uh, seeing uh, make it to the big screen someday, or even the big stage. I, it's a great, I, it's a great story. Um, it was a kind of a hey, let's make a movie uh, situation. It happened at uh, one of the salons that I've been doing for 17 years. A bunch of us, having seen ourselves on videotape after a party, um, got all excited about how somebody looked so much like a 1920s movie star in that outfit and this and that, and it wouldn't it be fun? And those were the best films and so forth. We decided we would attempt to make a movie as part of a process of learning how to make movies. None of us had ever done it before, so we learned that you can do everything with. Uh, you can do everything in this town um, free, almost, up until the time when you've got the film in the can, and that's when there's no more free ride. So we got up that far, we managed to uh, beg and borrow some uh, time, uh, unbeknownst to the uh, owner of the facility, to do an edit, and we produced a three-minute music video basically based on a black and white uh, melodrama and it's a nice little piece and uh, the people who worked on it were extremely talented and it's still got legs <laughs> that being the case one thing led to another I met a lot of people we did a um, couple of showcases uh, Jeff Consiglio who's a co-founder of Rosebud um, was putting together a series of uh, showcases for independent film and video people uh, on video uh, at the nightclub fifth column and uh, the first one he did, he invited my film to be shown. My film, my little piece. And, um, so I met him then and I watched what this event was and I thought, this is a great idea. What I really would like to do is not make movies, but having understood how difficult it is to get them done, I now felt that what I really could contribute was to give people an opportunity who have gone through the hell to do something with that product. <laughs> because it's not enough simply to have it done. And so we began doing a series of showcases. Later we linked up with the Washington um, International Film Festival to create a Washington showcase because although it was the DC International Film Festival, there was no presence. They had also wanted to see my film, Never Trust a Pretty Face, and they, uh, they had shown it the year before as part of the film festival. So I knew them and uh, we started a Washington showcase and we curated films. We sought films to show in that Washington showcase. And and so it was a natural next step when Brian Tate gathered us together as the result of our having been doing this independent film and video showcase at the Fifth Column. Fifth Column, who became our our loyal and long-standing sponsor, by the way, <laughs> um, to think of doing a similar sort of a event that would showcase local work and that would devote itself toward promoting and um, and showcasing and recognizing um, local talent. So that's how that all came together. And I swear I'll never make another movie. Why not? Oh, I have no interest in it whatsoever. It's hell. It's absolute hell. Absolute hell. You've got to love it so much that you can't do anything else. And I don't. <laughs> I love too many other things. <laughs> I mean, I worship and adore artists who have that intensity of vision. Um, 
because they can't help themselves. <laughs> it's there, you know, and I want to help them get it out where people can see it and appreciate it. That's my mission in life. Not, I don't have the vision. I appreciate the vision. That's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. We have about 13 rotating members. We are part of a uh, 501c3 nonprofit corporation called First Shot Productions, which is my company. Um, and it's called First Shot for all of the reasons I've been describing here. So we formed a 501c3 company to serve as a sponsor for Rosebud, and we intend to do other things in First Shot as well. Um, but that's the sponsor for Rosebud. And then basically, sponsor meaning the ability to solicit funds um, for charitable purposes or not tax deductible funds, tax deductible donations. So we go out and we solicit um, support, and Roland House has been a wonderful, steadfast supporter. Um, the three, the, the four film commissions, uh, the mayor's office, of uh, Motion Picture and Television Development, the Maryland Film Office Commission, the Prince George's County and Virginia Film Offices have uh, given us a lot of in-kind support, and Kodak. Kodak has donated a tremendous amount of money and film that we give away as prizes. Oh. Oh, it fell, that's why. Oh, how far back? <laughs> it, I just want to notice when you're just in this past time. Oh, all right. No, I think I... No, I don't. Wait. Let me... Uh... That's the way that I have it before. I don't know, but... I had it so it wasn't so visible. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. On the inside. I had it about somewhere kind of... Excuse me. How many, um, how many nominees were there? 22. Okay. How's that sound? Right. How many nominees and, um, out of a total one? Yeah. How many nominees were there out of a total one? The 94 competition, um, we had about 150 entries, and um, out of that, uh, the judges were supposed to have picked 20, and they just couldn't. So we're flexible. I mean, hey, if you love it, we love it. So uh, there were 22 nominees this year, and from those 22 nominees, the same panel came back and reviewed all of the ones they had selected, and then they chose five um, pieces that were uh, identified as winners of the Rosebud Award. And one of those five was the best of show. Um, and that piece is called The Grifters of New York. Um, and it's a very funny documentary, sort of in the style of TV Nation. Um, that's that. Okay. The <laughs> oh yeah, we're all volunteers. <laughs> um, we operate, uh, there are about 13 of us, um, more or less firmly affiliated but loosely associated, meaning everyone goes about their business, everybody has got their task each year, it's become, everyone has taken on a certain responsibility. I serve as the sort of overall um, co-director, and I co-direct with Rosie Dempsey, who is in charge of our uh, press and public relations. And then uh, others come in as their time approaches to do those things which is their switch they, they specialize in. Um, and we welcome volunteers and we're looking particularly for um, people who like to write about film. We can always use people to help us develop the press and uh, public relations material and the brochures and so forth. Um, 
also people who just want to help out. But frankly, it's a little difficult to use volunteers. We have no office. We just, you know, operate by phone. Um, and we meet at, you know, my place every once in a while or here. People cycle through uh, Chief Ike's on Wednesday. They know I'm here and this is an opportunity to do business, drop something off, introduce something, ask a question, answer a question, check in. Roland House. Yeah. yeah. About Will. Yeah, Will. Will has been a friend of mine. I mean, the people come here not because it's a rosebud thing, but because uh, he's been a friend of mine since 77. <laughs> he was a young pup then. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, people come here to see me who have known me all my life. And, and sometimes nobody shows up and sometimes 40 people show up. It's just a question of who happens to feel like dropping by on any given night. But I'm always here. It makes it easy for me. Oh, okay, great. Uh, he may be upstairs, um, but uh, yeah, he may be upstairs. I'm not sure. Do you want him particularly, or you just want uh, somebody? Just some rose, but you're not oh, yeah. Rose, but. Yeah. Well, you know, okay. it's just another white guy. I'm ready for you with me. No, I mean, I. <laughs> the only one that can't come to dinner is Jeffrey Dahmer. Anybody else can come. <laughs> Okay, can we... Uh, what about the future? Oh. What are your plans for the future? Do you have any new ideas for Rose Bud and expanding? Well, we're always uh, open to opportunities to expand. Most importantly, what we're looking for is to expand our um, sponsors, the people who are willing to donate goods, services, and most importantly, money, uh, which we promise we will turn around and give to the filmmakers. Right now, we're able to give about $250 uh, to each of the five Rosebud winners as a prize in addition to the, um, the Rosebud Award itself. Um, and we would basically like to be able to make that 250000 someday. I mean, the only way I want to grow is not in the way we operate or in our staff or in anything particular other than to grow in the amount of money we're able to turn over to, um, to the filmmakers that win our awards because then we'll have something going where we can actually see the next year people taking that money spending it locally making a film building the building the thing um, and if they and I think we'll probably if we get that much money we're probably going to make it a requirement that they have to make the film here and <laughs> <laughs> No, because we'd be in a conflict of interest. We've got, uh, we, we judge films that are already made. If we're also engaged in helping to create the films, um, then it's, we would, we can't do that. So, um, what we're going to do about the people that go out and make a film with the money that we give them for the award is not the same thing as sponsoring um, a particular film. It associates us with a particular film and we want to maintain absolute hands-off. We want to be, we want to show integrity and we want to be honest and we want to have everybody think of the uh, competition in that way. Oh, the salon? Uh, I've moved around since the 17 years we started at Columbia Station in 77. Um, and since then I was at uh, Café Le Trec, at uh, Café Riche, at uh, Bradshaw's, now Roxanne's, at a couple of other places that have since closed. Um, I usually leave when the place gets too popular um, and we get crowded out. Um, or when it simply becomes too ugly in there. <laughs> um, or I get bored for one reason or another. Usually I'm at a place for about uh, two to three years because people can't be wondering where I am. If I'm going to be somewhere, people have to know where it is. Because uh, I don't send out invitations. I, give, I have cards. People know where it is. And when I change, it takes a long time for the word to get out because there are a lot of people who, who I would like to see. <laughs>
Yeah, so I've been here about uh, almost three, going on four years. I started upstairs at Chaos, and now we moved down when Chief Ike's opened. <laughs>